Hi, this is the Sign Chef. In this video, I'm taking you through the first part of our tutorial on the 2024 chemistry practical, specifically on the, uh, on the qualitative analysis. In this year's qualitative analysis, we'll be working on a mixture of two salts, sodium carbonate and like two travel nitrate five, right? So specifically, I'll be taking you through the chemistry of reactions for this qualitative analysis. Then after that, we'll now carry out the actual test on each of the cations. So, follow me. Our qualitative analysis for this year is a mixture of sodium trialdo carbonate 4 and lead 2 trialdo nitrate 5, as I already stated. And you know that these are two soluble salts. So you don't trust the only four, it's soluble, it's vacuous, and the two trials nitrate five is also what soluble. Why? Because all trials nitrate five salts are soluble, and all sodium salts, which is a group one metal, are what soluble, right? Even though most carbonates are not soluble, and some like two salts are not soluble, right? But because of the sodium ion and the nitrate ion in the two salts, they are both what soluble salt, fine. Now, when the solutions of these soluble salts are mixed together, you will get a precipitate, that is PbCO3 solid plus what? NaNO3Hs. That's two NaNO3Hs. Now, what type of reaction is this? This is a precipitation reaction. This is a precipitation reaction. Or you can call it what? A double decomposition. Why am I going through this? Because you may also need this knowledge in your question three, right? You no, know, question three comes from anywhere. It's not specific. It tests your knowledge or understanding of basic chemistry practicals or skills in the laboratory. And also some things that you uh, your knowledge of chemistry in the classroom, right? So double decomposition or precipitation what reaction. This method is always used to prepare soluble what salt. And what's the insoluble salt here? Sodium, sorry, lead two trioxocarbonate four. Fine. So what's the significance of this reaction now? Or how does this relate to the practicals that you've been doing? Fine. You are given a mixture of salts, right? Two soluble salts, even that you'll be asked to dissolve the salt, that mixture in water. So when you dissolve that mixture in water, you will get a precipitate. The precipitate will be formed, right? And after which will be what? Filter. You filter the mixture, right? And if you, in filtering the mixture, what will happen? The lead, 2 trials of the 4, will be your what? Your residue. Well, the sodium trioxonitrate 5 will be your what? Your filtrate. Are we together? So you have two portions of the mixture now the residue and the filtrate. And this is now where your actual test will start. Now, what would they ask you to do? After getting the residue and the filtrate, you first of all dry the residue. You have to dry the residue for some time and to allow the water to drain out, right? Or the filter to drain out for some time. Well, so you may be asked to start testing the what the filtrate. And the filter, what are the ions present in the filtrate? The ions present in the filtrate are what sodium ion and what travel nitrate 5 ion. In your syllabus, you don't test for sodium ion. So there's no bar asked to, to test for this, but you'll be required to test for what? Trioxonitrate 5 ion. And how do you test for trioxonitrate 5 ion? You test for trioxonitrate 5 ion using the what? The brown ring what test. And what do you need for the brown ring test? What do you need for a brown ring test? You need concentrated H2SO4 and freshly prepared Ion 2 sulfate. 
These are the reagents that you need for your brown ring test. Now, this is our ion 2 the runs of a 6, right? And this is a concentrated what? H2SO4. Are you together? So after this analysis, we'll go into the actual world, practical. I'm just show you the steps that you go through. So how can we test for this? Or why the brown ring test? So what happens is that the concentrated H2SO4 we react to the trinitrophyte ion in the filtrate to form the trinitrophyte salt. Are we together? It will form the trinitrophyte salt, right? And of course, trinitrosulfate six ion. Now, the trinitrophyte salt, being an oxidizing agent, right? Remember, it's not, it will be dilute. Trinitrophyte salt, being an oxidizing agent. We will react with the freshly prepared ion 2 tetrahydrosulfate 6 to form an addition of compound FeSO4.1 NO, right? Which is the what? The brown ring. The brown ring that will be formed at the junction of the aqueous and um, acidic acid word layer. Are we together? This brown ring will be formed at the junction of the aqueous uh, and acid wall layer. How would that be? This concentrated H2SO4 and the freshly prepared ion 2 tetrahydrosulfate 6 will be added to the trouser nitrate, what? 5. Right? That's to the filtrate. First of all, you add the freshly prepared trouser nitrate 5 to the filtrate, right? In the test tube. You then gently add the concentrated H2SO4 to the mixture, right? And it has to be done carefully, right? Because this brown ring is very delicate. If that is not done, if, if care is not taken, a little agitation will make it disappear, right? So, and remember, you're working with the concentrated word acids. You have to be very, very well careful. It is to be advisable to use a dropping word pipette. Fine. So, that is the chemistry behind the brown ring test. You would have been able to identify your trazonitrophyte ion. After that, you'll be asked to collect the residue in a test tube. And the residue here contains what? Like two ion and trazonitrophyte, sorry, trazonitrophyte 4 ion, right? Like, remember, the residue is like two trazonitrophyte 4. So, I mean, trazonitrophyte 4, it will always react with an acid to liberate carbon 4 oxide. So, they will ask you to add dilute acid to it. Remember, this guy is insoluble in water, but it will dissolve in what? In an acid. So, but which acid will you use here? Or will you be asked to use here? Now, this is where the trick comes in. You cannot use dilute HCl here. Because if you use dilute HCl, the chloride ion from the HCl will combine with the like, two ions to form a precipitate. Like two chloride, which is not what they want. The aim would have been defeated because they want to dissolve it, not to form a precipitate, right? And HCl will combine with this to form PBCl2, which is a precipitate. You can also use what? Dilute H2SO4. You can use dilute H2SO4. Why? Because the same thing will happen. PBSO4 will be what? Form also what? Insoluble. So, what, which acid will now be asked to use to dilute, to dissolve the let two trials come in four. Of course, that would be what dilute HNO3. That's dilute trials of nitrate five acid. Okay, so because if we do that, the let two will combine with the trials of nitrate five ion from the acid to form a soluble word let two trials of nitrate five, which is what you started with. Are you together? Yes. So from here now. So you have what? PB2 plus, which is the like 2 trouser nitrate 5, aqueous, plus, of course, carbon 4 oxide, which will be given off as a gas, and of course, water. So what will be your observation here? Your observation here will be effervescence of the colorless and odorless gas that turns lime water what? Milky. That aside, take note of this. we we'll still come to the actual practical. Okay, so after that, the next thing is to now test for the 
like two iron. Remember, you have tested for the trouser metric five iron. I have now tested for the what? For the trouser cup or the four iron, right? Next is to now carry out the test for like two trouser metric five. Sorry, for the leg two what? Iron. Now the leg two iron is amphoteric. What does that mean? It reacts with both acids and what alkalis to form what salts, right? So because of that, it will react with sodium hydroxide, with excess sodium hydroxide, right? To form what? A press. First of all, it will react with sodium hydroxide in drops to form a white precipitate, right? Now, when you now add the sodium hydroxide in excess, that precipitate will do what? Dissolve to give a colorless what? Solution. That confirms this ion LL2 as, uh, what do you call it? As an amphoteric word, ion. Are you together? Fine. So the next thing, we also carry out the same test with uh, ammonia. The precipitate will not dissolve in excess ammonia, right? Why? Because it is not zinc ion. It's only zinc ion that dissolves in excess ammonia. So how then will you confirm that this is lead 2 ion? The ion present is lead 2 ion. Remember, it's not only lead 2 ion that dissolves in excess uh, sodium hydroxide, right? But remains insoluble in excess ammonia. Aluminum also gives similar word, observations, right? So how do we differentiate between aluminum ion and lead 2 ion? How, or how can you confirm that the ion, this ion present is what? Lead 2 ion. That's where your uh, dilute HCl comes in. Yes, from here, you have to divide this into three different word portions. So the first portion is reaction with sodium hydroxide. The second portion will be reaction with aqueous ammonia, which forms white precipitate in drops and insoluble in what? Excess. With aqueous sodium hydroxide, it forms white precipitate in drops, but precipitate dissolves in excess uh, sodium hydroxide to form a colorless solution. Now, the third portion, so the third portion will be asked to add what? Dilute HCl. And when you add dilute HCl, what happens? You will get what? A white precipitate of the two chloride. Remember, all chlorides are soluble. All chlorides are what? Soluble. Except silver chloride, lead 2 chloride, and mercury 1 chloride. Are you together? So that's the chemistry applied here. Are you together? Then, from this now, this, how will you know that the precipitate form is lead 2 chloride? Lead 2 chloride has a, a distinct characteristic, right? It dissolves. It dissolves on warming. So they will ask you to heat or warm the resulting what precipitate, right? If it dissolves, right? It dissolves on warming. So this precipitate dissolves on warming and then reappears on cooling. Then it means that that precipitate is what led to chloride, and the ion present or the cation present is what led to ion. So they will, can, they will ask you to warm it gently, and then allow it to what stand for some time. Are you together? Or allow it to cool for some time. So when you warm it, the precipitate will disappear. It will dissolve. It will dissolve. Then when you allow it to stand, the white precipitate will do what? Reappear. Well, once that happens, it means that precipitate is lead to chloride, and the cation present there is lead to iron. So that is that on the chemistry of reaction, on the qualitative analysis of um, the 2024 wire chemistry practical. And I believe that you had learned a lot, at least for the teachers, right? So this will guide you in. Uh, explaining or teaching your students on what to expect during the practicals. In case you're not getting the expected result, right, you will know how to go about it or handle your work, the challenges. So in the next part of this video, we'll be carrying out the actual 
practical. If you have obtained any value from this video, kindly hit the like button, right? Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe to stay updated with more valuable videos. So until we come your way next time, remain blessed.